Let's start late in the third quarter. The starters let the Jazz take back the lead in the third, and Utah looked primed to extend their lead when the reserves checked into the game. The Knicks bench needed to respond as they had so many times last season. Fortunately, Emmanuel quickly was up to the task. With Derek Rose clearly diminished this season, it really feels like IQ needs to take control of the second unit. It helps that they didn't have to drag around the corpse of Evan Fournier, who got a DNPCD. Anyway, IQ was definitely up to the challenge, hitting two triples and a layup. Obi Toppin continued his ascent as the NBA's most unlikely three-piece sniper by hitting a pair of threes himself. In a flash, the bench had turned a deficit into a 10-point Knicks lead in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Of course, Thibs wasn't satisfied. He pulled Obi at the first opportunity. That wasn't surprising. It's just who Thibs is at this point. What really surprised me was that he eventually pulled quickly, who was an absolute two-way force throughout the game, 13 points. Four steals. The Jazz seemed to regain the pep in their step, at least on offense. Last season's Knicks might have collapsed under the weight of the coach's incompetence. Fortunately, these Knicks have Jalen Brunson and, I can't believe I'm typing this, Cam Reddish. Those two held off a Utah rally and secured a win for the good guys. Brunson played a sloppy game by his own high standards, four turnovers, but that dude knows how to get big buckets. He also found Cam and RJ for layups late. Brunson led the team with 25 points and 8 assists. He also kept the ball away from Julius Randle in the fourth, which was important. Still, in terms of impact, I would put two Knicks ahead of Brunson on this evening, Cam Reddish and Emmanuel quickly. The Jazz really pass the ball well, and the Knicks usually struggle with that kind of ball movement. But more passes mean more opportunities for turnovers, and IQ and Cam have the length and tenacity to make Utah pay for any sloppy passes. On offense, Cam recovered from a poor start to finish with 19 points on 7-13 shooting. Perhaps my favorite sequence of the game was when Malik Beasley hit his second three in a row to push the Jazz lead to 7. And Cam went right back down the floor to can a 3 in Beasley's eye. He's playing great basketball right now. IQ is the Knicks' best defender at this point. He just is. If he is truly emerging from his shooting slump, he shot 5 to 10 from the field, 3 to 6 from 3, then he's going to have a special season. RJ Barrett is apparently sick with a non-COVID illness. He really struggled from the field, 5 to 11, and the free throw line, 8 to 14. If he's really sick, maybe let him sit Wednesday night in Denver. OB Toppen shot 3 to 4 from 3, which is apparently just normal stuff now. He's shooting 42.4% for the season. Preposterous. Randall was just kind of there tonight, which is an improvement for him. He did call the players only meeting the day before, though. As P and Tear I swear him not James Dolan noted, the players should get together for dinner more often if this is going to be the result. No minutes for Quentin Grimes. Hopefully this is just some Thibs weirdness and not some more foot issues. We have seen a lot of different versions of RJ Barrett so far this season. Last night, however, we saw the inconsistent, having a tough time version of Barrett that nearly cost New York big time. While I want to cut him some slack as he apparently was playing with some sort of illness, it does not matter that much. If you are sick, just don't play. After losing in disappointing fashion on Sunday against the Thunder, 
The Knicks got it back together against the Utah Jazz on Tuesday with a 118-111 win. While this game was closer than it should have been, a win is a win. This was an ugly, gritty win for the Knicks and while some players did not perform particularly well, others made up for it with some very strong play. The Knicks are entering the start of their five-game Western Conference road trip, so to pull a win out like this means a lot. They will face many tough opponents such as the Warriors and Suns, so the Knicks need to take what they can get. Regardless, this was an all-around rough night for Barrett, as he racked up 18 points on 5 for 18 shooting from the field and 0 for 5 shooting from 3. Barrett really struggled on all parts of the court offensively and it was really hard to watch at times. As unworried as I am about Barrett, he needs to become a more consistent player if he wants to be worth his new hefty contract. Obviously, the games he plays extremely well are nice, but we need to see that out of Barrett more often. Out of his 14 games played this season, Barrett only has five in which he has shot at league average or higher in field goal percentage. It is better to have many bright spots as opposed to none. However, Barrett needs to be more consistent for the sake of the team. I have no doubt that we will see Barrett bounce back soon, perhaps in the Knicks' next matchup against the Nuggets. Regardless, I am still very excited to see what the rest of the 2022-23 season holds for the 22-year-old.